I've pre-prepared eight test tubes here. On the left hand side, these seven test tubes contain buffers of pH 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 10, and 12 respectively. On the right hand side, I have a test tube that contains a solution of an unknown pH. I start by adding the anthocyanins to both the unknown sample as well as the seven known buffer samples. As I add the anthocyanins, I see a distinct color change in the solution, and this directly correlates to the pH of that particular solution. Please note that currently with the unknown sample, even though I get the color change, I cannot determine the pH as I don't have a colorimetric scale to compare that to. As I add the anthocyanins to the buffers, I can begin to develop my colorimetric scale. And this colorimetric scale, where I have colors that correspond to each pH, will then allow me to determine the pH of my unknown solution. As can be seen by comparing the unknown solution to each of the different buffers, pH of 8 is the correct pH for my unknown sample. On a final note regarding anthocyanins, I've composed a time-lapse video that shows a 15-minute period of the pH 12 buffer and anthocyanin mixture sitting at room temperature. Notice the distinct color change that occurs over this 15-minute time period. Notice that the pH 12 buffer and anthocyanin mixture initially started out as a dark green color at the beginning, but then slowly faded to a light yellow color. pH paper works in a similar fashion to anthocyanins in that it uses a color metric scale to determine pH. Simply take a piece of the paper dip it into the solution, and then compare the colorimetric result to the chart provided in your lab manual. In this particular example, it's determined that the solution has a pH of 8.